So Warner Media has so many properties. It's such a big company, and it has such a big responsibility. How much do you care or work with what the diversity in the content and what you're showing on your programs? Yeah, it, it's a huge priority for us at Warner Media, and we talk a lot about how diversity really fuels our storytelling. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we do. We tell the world's stories, and if we're not reflecting the audiences that are out there um, in our casts and in our, you know, in our writer's room and we're not telling the right stories then we're not going to attract the right audiences. So it's it's a huge priority um, both inside and outside the organization and we've made a commitment um, to the production and to the creative community that we're going to hold ourselves accountable. We came out with the first commitment um, and really feel like we're leading the industry in this area um, and we're going to have an annual report to track how we're doing um, both uh, you know in front of and as I said, behind the camera. And then we actually just announced last week that we hired for the first time ever a chief diversity and inclusion officer for Warner Media, so that we truly hold ourselves accountable and we think about how are we building a diverse workplace within our organization because, you know, frankly, our audiences demand it and we need to we need to do better and hold ourselves accountable. And how important is brand purpose to how the consumer like looks at a brand and it, why else is it important? To yeah, you know, I think we hear a lot about it. It's one of the themes that you've hear, heard this week um, throughout the festival because people, I think brands really understand that the next generation, the younger generation, are looking for brands that are making a statement that stand for something more than just the, the products or services that they deliver. Um, and so we truly are looking at what is our noble purpose and we believe that in this age of, you know, divisiveness and, you know, more and more people are lonely, living alone, feeling disconnected, um, you know, we're all connected, so connected by our social media, but we're not connecting one-on-one -on -one emotionally. And we believe that our brands and our stories can bring them together, whether it's our sports properties, the movies that bring people to the theaters to watch together, the shows of the communities that we create or experiences that we create off screen. Um, and so for us, that idea of enabling connection through fandom and creating those communities, I think is just really important for us and it's important for our employees as well to feel like they're part of something bigger. And how does a traditional powerhouse media company address that people are on their phones now and that and this new digital area era, how do you take that marketing message and reach everyone where they are? We really think about it's no longer a one-way relationship with our viewers and we've kind of changed the way that we market um, because we know people are viewing our content differently across multiple screens and we want to take advantage of that. I mean, we we believe that the future of TV is really mobile and it's multi-platform and so we want to make sure that our content is everywhere where our viewers want it, need it, when they want it. Um, and so we've taken just a completely different approach. We're much more agile in our marketing. Um, we used to do big launch campaigns. We would say we'd launch them and leave the show. And everything was about the premiere number, live same day. No longer is that how people are viewing. So we have spent, we've really moved our marketing dollars into a lot more sustaining. And we think about building audiences from one episode to the next and really carrying them from, you know, from week to week and then, um, you know, season to season. Can you give me an example to help me understand like what that looks like? One of the things we're really proud of on some of our um, cable networks like TBS or TNT is that we've been successful at actually growing audiences from week to week. So pulling them and bringing them in, we know that people now a lot of times wait until episode four to say, you know, do I even want to try this? Um, and so it's really important for us to create buzz, to create some momentum um, and build social chatter around the shows as well as kind of really get out into the community. So we've changed and we, we, we think about um, our marketing campaigns now is more kind of omni-channel and so for shows like a Tracy Morgan we get Tracy out into the community we invest in the community we create experiences that we went back and we recreated a basketball court and a playground in an area in Brooklyn where he grew up um, and, and, and kind of talking about that it, it really brings in new audiences for us we've shifted towards more privacy but also data has become so powerful how has that changed what you've done you know we yeah. use data to really inform everything that we do now um, and it's us thinking about how are we using that to create more targeted marketing campaigns, more personalized message, and hopefully make the consumer experience better. You know, we think about data as we're now building out our ad products and thinking about how can we create audience-based selling solutions um, versus just the old demo solutions, because that's not going to work for everyone anymore. Um, and we also, in our marketing and in our advertising, are really trying
trying to move towards this idea of um, you know attribution so how do I know that what the dollars that I spent actually convert it to viewers or convert it to whatever our advertising partners want and so the more that we can use data to drive those insights and actually show that our marketing actually converted and people took an action from it I think the more success we'll have and how do you do that how do you know what data to trust when everything is everywhere do you use in-house data or do you use external data you know we use a combination of both um, and you know we we believe in trusted premium content and really making sure that we're being extremely transparent with our partners as well as with our you know our viewers um, and so we have a combination of data that you know we've collected throughout our Turner pro um, properties as well as you know leveraging AT&T data to really make sure that we're being smart and targeted and, and respecting the viewers privacy as well now it seems like there are a lot of brands that are getting involved in political and social conversations and you have so many different brands when and how is it appropriate to get involved in some of these more hot topics. In today's age, I think, as I said, a lot of times um, consumers of the younger generation expect brands to get in and have a stay and have a point of view. You know, we're very lucky within our portfolio of brands, we have CNN. Um, and CNN's mission is to lead with the facts um, and have fact-based conversations. So part of their mission is truly to hold those in power accountable. Um, and so that really is one of our lead ways into that conversation is to leverage our journalism um, and our journalists to really kind of, as we always say, kind of have back first conversations. And looking forward, how do you think that marketing is going to change? At the end of the day, I think we need to make sure that we don't, you know, err on the extreme of trying to get too data driven and too kind of leading with the science and not the art. You still want to have that creativity, the story, and the emotional connection. Um, and I think if you lose that and you move too much towards that science, um, I think that we've got to find that right balance. And in your history of your career, is there a moment of a mistake that you made that you really learned a lot from? There's so many. <laughs> you know, it's it's been such a journey. I've been so lucky to be at Turner and now Warner Media for the past 19 years. Um, and it's been fascinating to kind of see these brands change and shift over time. Um, and I think we'll continue to see that. So we have to learn to be agile and, and change with it. You know, years ago when we were going very heavily into very genre specific brands, and we had, you know, TBS was all about funny and TNT was about, um, you know, drama. Now, you know, as we move and the consumers are consuming content so differently, we know it's just really about the shows and we're intermixing because we have to change the business models um, and we have to figure out how do we continue to keep our core business strong but really move into you know a new streaming service and create that one-to-one -one relationship with the customer so it's really finding those balances and you know hopefully we won't stumble too much along the way but it's always hard to kind of protect the core while growing something new. And looking back on other campaigns that other people have done, is there a campaign that you have seen that you just wish that you had thought of, that it was so smart? I mean, it's in the family, but the Game of Thrones campaigns over the years and just the stories that they tell, the partners that they bring, and how they kind of surprise and delight their audience um, is something that I'm proud of. I'm part of the family. I wasn't part of the campaign, um, but wish I was.